started by businesses as a form of free advertising. The recent Duolingo memes got me thinking more about it. Duolingo wasn't a small app at the time, but it became a lot more popular after the fact. There have been other memes revolving around a particular product or brand as well, that make me think this is happening on a strategic level beyond some kid thinking it'd be hella funny to do this or that. Marshmallow doesn't actually produce his own music. My biggest piece of evidence is the creator arcade videos, he speaks and navigates Ableton like someone with only a basic knowledge of music production. He does everything number by number, producers don't do that. You can't just instantly know that sound needs a boost of exactly 1 dB at exactly 1.2 kHz without even listening to the sound first. He randomly pauses every now and then, presumably to be fed lines. And he seems to lack even a basic understanding of music theory, recreating MIDI by randomly clicking in notes with no regard for the key of the song. Someone with the level of skill he demonstrates should not be capable of making radio quality hits. Disney released Frozen, so that it would be the top result when searching Disney Frozen, and not anything about Walt Disney's head being cryogenically frozen in the Disney theme park. I don't know how likely that is, on either count actually. Area 51 is just a front that was allowed to become popular in the public eye, but actually has nothing of value. Not saying aliens in bases exist, just saying Area 51 is allowed to be the popular secret base, thing to cover up actual secrets. I am not downplaying what the airmen at 51 do, just saying that what they do now is not likely as top secret as people are led to believe. That our phones are always recording, at least audio, to target advertising of course, but more secret agent things as well. My mother-in-law talking at dinner about how hard it is to train for a marathon now that she is over the age of 55. I get ads all over Reddit and Google that read, over 50 and a runner? Check out this random product within four hours of the conversation. I know there was a bunch of stuff about this, but I think every company denied it. Could be wrong though. Marijuana legalization is being pushed by Big Pharma. Once it's legalized, they will then push for restrictive regulations in the interest of public safety that will force shutdowns of consumer or small grow operations, those are only allowed now to foster positive sentiment towards legalization. So then it's legal and they have a monopoly. Planned obsolescence, if it's still a conspiracy theory. Why does my phone suddenly develop unseen issues when the new one is released? It's not a coincidence. And who even asked for these tech companies to release a new phone every year? We live in a time where technology is now growing at a rather slower pace compared to the 2000s when there was rapid innovation. It's not like my current phone is getting crappier in one year. But wait, it is. Applies to phones, tablets, smart watches, basically most, rather expensive, internet-connected devices receiving updates. There's a recent increase in realistic space colonization movies to garner interest in space exploration. Because some people at the top know it's needed. It's actually probably so very wealthy people can get funding and support from us average losers so they can abandon the planet as soon as possible, while we suffer all the crap that was most likely caused by them. People at the top don't give a crap about you and I, we can sit on the planet and pay for oxygen as we slowly die from cancer. They want to get off the planet. Male birth control advancements are being squashed by the pharma companies who produce the female contraceptive pill because of all the money the pill generates despite it, causing so many unsavory side effects. Example, Vashalgo. A non-invasive treatment for men that mimic a vasectomy but is completely reversible. It's been around since 2010 but can't get funding. I think it's because it is a once of, maybe more than once depending on number of kids you want, treatment and reversal and not a daily dose, so it is not a constant income. Why fund something that won't give you a steady stream of money, even if it means a healthier society? I am not talking about the male contraceptive pill or a spermicide gel. This is, for lack of better way to explain, an IUD type thing for men, completely different to the male pill that has made mainstream media. It was developed in India and there are online sites for them to get funding through sponsors. This is my tinfoil hat theory, it's not based on meticulous research. That Avril Lavigne died in the mid-2000s and her record label hired someone who looked like her to take over her career. Michael Jordan didn't decide to step away from the NBA to play baseball to honor his dad or anything like that. He got caught gambling and David Stern couldn't allow the league to lose all credibility with its biggest star being suspended for betting on games. He had him take a couple years off instead of publicly punishing him. 
I've posted this one before, but I think that there are high level rings of pedophiles and sexual predators specifically so that those above them can keep them under control. We know that there are kingmakers. While the big actors and musicians today are certainly talented, there are plenty of B and C listers who could be just as big if only they had the backing of a big publisher like Disney, Paramount, etc. Thing is, making a king is expensive. You have to spend a lot of time and money getting the public to care about them before they start to pay you back, and once they're big they don't technically need you anymore. So the kingmakers are naturally going to look for people who are retainable to ensure they get their investment back. They have to, for every king they make dozens of duds, it's an expensive process. Sometimes that's as simple as them being naive. A good legal contract can lock them in for a long time, and often the only way out is to destroy your value so the kingmaker stops caring. Look at Britney Spears' meltdown for example, but if you can't get that then blackmail works just as well. I suspect that for a long time homosexuality was the go-to black mark. That's why it seemed like for so long that the big names were always having gay scandals and the like. It was easy to stage, easy to feed them their vice of choice when they were good, and not illegal, just career suicide, so it was low risk high reward. But of course the downside to making a king is that he gets a good deal of power too and eventually public opinion shifted and it became okay to be gay. Could still destroy some careers, the teen heartthrob loses a lot of his appeal when it turns out he's more interested in his very small male fanbase, but hardly enough to keep them from going solo or jumping to another label. So now they moved on to more shocking and illegal appetites. Harder to spot vulnerable marks and tougher to get them their vice of choice, but if it was easy to make a king everybody would be doing it. Someone who abuses women or children isn't about to cross their handler, they shut up and take their cut. After all, they're still being handsomely rewarded, just not as much as they could be making if they didn't have a publisher leeching out the lion's share of their profits. I don't think this is a huge coordinated conspiracy, mind you. I think that quite a few successful talent managers have discovered that sexual predators are surprisingly easy to manage if you're willing to clean up their messes for them, and that when you're talking about tens of millions of dollars you can suddenly afford high-powered lawyers and firemen who neither ask nor answer questions. But between predators gaining power and promoting like-minded monsters, and managers seeking out predators because they're easy to keep on contract, I think it explains a bit of why there always seems to be at least a few sexual assault scandals going on in movies and music at any given time. All the UFO sightings throughout history are just humans from the future on a time-traveling safari meant to observe how we were in the past. They are supposed to keep out of sight. But because of human and mechanical errors, there have been hiccups with their cloaking which have resulted in being seen. That's why there have always been so many reports of them throughout history, but there has never been an attack. It's just us. Also the reason why we don't see as many examples of UFOs now even through pretty much everyone has a camera is because people are not that interested in this time period since we already document aspects of human life all the time. PETA is ran by the meat industry to delegitimize vegetarianism and cutting back on meat. This one is more personal but I fully believe it. Long story short, my father-in-law was good friends with a guy who was pretty high up in Boeing. Like, knew some top secret kinda of stuff. Well he ended up quitting as he couldn't take the pressure. He was a very paranoid person, to the point as was a hindrance to his life. Well, a few months after he starts telling my father-in-law that he's being watched and followed and that the government is coming for him. Like I said, insanely paranoid. A few extra details that will be important, he drove a moped as his primary transportation and he was very overweight. Lo and behold, he comes up dead a month or so later. The official story is this, he was riding along when a hitchhiker waved him down. He stopped to pick him up, drove a few miles down the road to a secluded wooded area pulled off the road, walked into the woods and shot himself. I shouldn't need to explain what's wrong here but I will anyway. I'm supposed to believe that a guy with crippling paranoia picked up some random hitchhiker and then killed himself. Even if he wasn't paranoid, it's basically impossible for him to fit a small child on his moped with him, let alone a full-grown male adult. No information was ever released about to hitchhiker. No name, no statements to the police, nothing. The Earth is a zoo created by aliens, and UFOs are visitors. In Lilo and Stitch, they said Earth was a wildlife preserve for mosquitoes. While the aliens refer to it as a preserve for mosquitoes, at the end of the movie we're told that it was a lie made up to protect Earth from destruction. There is intelligent life out there, it's just that we're too primitive for any prominent contact with aliens. 
Aliens choose to not come to Earth because we are lacking in intelligence and technology and that the conspiracy is that we know this for whatever reason but plead ignorance and suggesting there is life out there. I somewhat subscribe to this idea. Imagine if advanced alien civilizations view and treat us like we do the people of North Sentinel Island. India until recently did a yearly overflight of the island and also sends out helicopters to check up on them after major events like the tsunami but we take a very hands-off approach since the islanders are so primitive. Who's to say some advanced alien civilization that views us as quaint isn't taking the same approach and that the UFO sightings aren't basically to us what the Indian government helicopters are to the islanders. I really hope we are in a simulation. Every religion's heaven sounds like a real drag, but I don't want everything to just end. Ideally, one day I'll die, then just wake up in a room, go get a snack or something, then load up another life and go for another spin. Repeat millions or billions of times. That Princess Diana's death was orchestrated by Prince Charles. I just can't wrap my head around the idea that, this guy has an affair with Camilla and gets caught. Divorce happens and even during the divorce and after, she is doing absolutely the best like just killing it still in her duties, mom duties, the gorgeous revenge velvet dress, the entire world adores her. Then all of a sudden she dies in this car accident due to her driver? You know how many countless times she was driven by someone, someone who was trained and hired specifically for the royal family. Then Prince Charles gets married to Camilla and all is right and well again in the public eye the world gets to see. Federal law enforcement bodies are working with the public and private prison industries to flood the streets with heroin and fentanyl, because they see the impending mass legalization of marijuana, and can't risk that many empty cells. A massive uptick in street opioid use in the past few years combined with aggressive policies targeting legitimate pain patients, and cutting them off of their medications, as well as restricting doctors' abilities to treat more people with things like Suboxone. It's not Big Pharma. Why would they allow their most popular and abusable medications to be all but banned if they're as big and powerful as everyone thinks? It's not like they're hawking new treatment drugs, and the government is working hard to ban natural alternatives like Kratom on top of it. To me, it all points to a concentrated effort to increase drug-related offenses to keep fines and court fees rolling in and cells filled after weed is legal. Amazon tracks people who buy ring doorbells and then waits for those same people to buy another product. Then they send actors and actresses to deliver the next package. While delivering, the actors are told to do something cute or quirky, dance, smell the flowers on the porch, or pet a dog, so that the owners will hopefully see the footage and post it online to social media and give the impression that working for Amazon is actually fun and exciting. All the while getting free advertisement. Music feuds don't exist. They are created by record labels. Anybody who thinks Taylor Swift and Katy Perry were feuding are morons. It is a marketing stunt. Their record labels create these feuds to sell music. When Taylor fans think Katy does a song about her they all buy the song to see what she is saying, then buy her album to find more songs that they think are about Taylor, and the exact same thing for Katy fans. They are given generic songs to sing that people just assume are about the other but in reality aren't about anybody. Same goes for rap feuds. A up-and-coming rapper feuds with a more successful rapper to gain popularity just as that more successful rapper did when they were coming up. All these feuds are just to sell more music. Stone Ape Theory is fascinating. The possibility that our conscious thought and self-awareness was developed from monkeys eating mushrooms is so crazy but still plausible. Remember when you were a child and had a life-changing revelation on how the world works? Remember any one of the life revelations that brought you to where you are? All of your thought from that point forth was altered and now on a different path of thinking. Your reality became different and a clearing took place in your mind where you finally understood. An epiphany. This absolutely happens when you take a high enough dose of psilocybin. The theory is that primates discovered shrooms in the wild and it unlocked logic or analytical thinking in their brain, the one thing that most differentiates us. With this newfound logic came a biological shift over millions of years. It would make sense that the split happened sudden and remained divided since humans with logic wouldn't form social bonds with primates like that. They'd stick to their species for survival and easier hunting. That the governments of this world, and other entities mentioned in these things, are double playing the conspiracy theories and theorists, and not only through stigmas like the tinfoil hat. I believe that for example if there is one huge leak by one of these guys, or maybe even by someone like Snowden, not him specifically, but someone in his kind of position or at least someone that won't be instantly deemed a nutjob, it's in fact a decoy. 
you hear about the mess ups they can afford to let you hear about, thus keeping everything in a constant state of confusion. Are they really that stupid to have that leaked? Or are they three steps ahead? You can never know, and that's the way they want you to be. There's a lot of things that go smoother than silk and nothing ever truly feels like it's changing, it's like. I believe they would have the manpower, the intelligence, and the stakes high enough to pull something like this off.